orthopedic surgeon, and sports medicine physician. And today, I'm reacting to Jorge Masvidal's crazy knockout of Ben Askren at UFC 239. Okay. For those of you who follow mixed martial arts, this past weekend was the completion of UFC 239. And on that card, one of the fights was the welterweight matchup between Jorge Masvidal and wrestler Ben Askren. If you chose to go to the washroom at the beginning of this fight, well, you chose the wrong time to do so because this fight was over in five seconds. In fact, this was the fastest knockout in UFC history. Five seconds. That's all it took. And in actuality, it was less than five seconds, but five seconds was the time that it took for the fight to actually officially be called by referee Jason Herzog. So recently, I posted a video discussing Shevchenko's knockout of Jessica I at UFC 238, and that was a highly technical and amazing knockout. But this knockout at UFC 239 was even more spectacular. And in this knockout, immediately at the beginning of the round, Jorge Masvidal ran across the ring, and as Ben Askren bent down to do a double leg takedown, he kneed him squarely in his head. Well, really not squarely, because he actually kind of glanced off the side of his head. When they showed the 360 degree view, or the view from the other side, we could see clearly that the blow did not strike him in the front of the head, but rather instead struck him right on the side of his temple. Immediately upon impact, Ben Askren lost all consciousness. He was unable to control himself and he fell to the ground rigid with his arms and legs locked into extension. It took referee Jason Herzog a few seconds to stop the fight and while he laid on the ground, Jorge Masvidal was able to hit him another few times before the fight was actually officially called. It took some time before Ben Askren was finally able to regain consciousness in the ring. And even after he did, he was still unsteady for quite some time and he required assistance to sit up, assistance to stand, and further assistance to walk out of the ring and back to the dressing room. Ben was subsequently released from the hospital and has been medically suspended from the UFC until September 5th. Now, first off, it is incredibly fortunate for Ben that he was actually struck on the side of the head rather than on the front of the head, as was Jorge Masvidal's intent when he ran across the ring. Why is that? I talked in my previous video about a matchup from Bellator 158. And in that contest, there was a match between Evangelista Cyborg Santos and Michael Venom Page. And that matchup played out in much the same way as did the matchup between Jorge and Ben. Michael Page jumped and did a flying knee directly at Cyborg's forehead. Instantaneously, as Cyborg was struck by the knees, Cyborg fell to the ground in pain and the match was called. Subsequent images from social media showed that Cyborg had actually suffered a comminuted skull fracture to the frontal bone, for which surgery was required. If you watched my video on the Jessica Eye Knockout, you'll remember that I said that knockout blows to the temporal region are particularly dangerous because of the neurovascular structures that lay directly under this area of the bone in the skull. However, in this case, I feel that it was more fortunate that Ben actually got struck in the temporal region rather than on the frontal area of the skull. When we watch the video, we see that he only received a glancing blow, with much of the force dissipated by his knee on the right clavicle. Had he received a direct blow on the frontal bone, such as had occurred with Cyborg Santos, I feel that for sure Ben Askren would have suffered a frontal skull fracture, and possible serious brain trauma. So what exactly is it that occurred with Ben and what caused him to lose consciousness? To answer this question, we have to talk a little bit about the brain and the container in which it is contained. That means the skull. Think of the brain as two hemispheres or two halves made out of jello. And this jello is suspended in fluid inside the skull. That fluid is called the cerebrospinal fluid. So when you receive a blow to the skull, there are a few things that happen in quick succession. First, the structure which is causing the impact strikes the side of the skull. The skull is accelerated in the direction of the blow. As it moves, the brain which is suspended 
stays where it is until the skull contacts the side of the brain. Then the brain, because it's like jello, rebounds off of the impaction side and travels through the fluid to the other side. Then it contacts the other side and rebounds off of that, back to the center. So you actually have two collisions for the price of one, even though you were only struck once. You have what's called a coup injury on the side of impact and then a contra coup injury on the opposite side. So this kind of explains what's happening to the brain on a large scale, but what actually happens on a smaller scale that causes the loss of consciousness? This is easiest to understand if you think of the brain as a computer. It's a computer that has many, many circuits and many, many wires that connect in the different parts of the brain. And basically, this computer is made up of several parts. It is made up of two hemispheres that sit beside each other and are connected by a structure in between called the corpus callosum. And this is a bridge that allows the two halves of the brain to communicate with one another. Those two hemispheres then sit on another part of the brain called the cerebellum. The brain stem that lies underneath the cerebellum joins the two hemispheres to the spinal cord down below. And it's the brain stem that controls many simple bodily functions such as level of consciousness. So what exactly occurs to the brain when someone loses consciousness? Well, as I said, it's a computer with many, many circuits. And when you get struck in the head, the connections between these many small wires and these numerous circuits around the brain becomes disrupted. And when this disruption occurs, the computer gets shut off. And after a brief loss of consciousness, most people are able to regain most of their normal function, which is really quite amazing when you think about it. Because being struck on the head is kind of like taking a baseball bat to your computer. And yet, the computer comes back on and continues working. If the loss of consciousness was short, and the degree of head injury was relatively mild, most people, 75 to 90%, will recover fully within several weeks to a few months. However, it's important to note that severe closed head injuries can result in prolonged periods of unconsciousness and significant deficits after the patient has regained consciousness. If the injury is severe and it is associated with significant bleeding, or significant pressure increase within the brain, then surgery may be required to relieve pressure on the brain. Long-term negative effects of this type of closed head injury can result in memory loss, paralysis, seizures, behavioral or cognitive changes, light sensitivity, and or visual disturbances. Now, a lot of people have asked, what is going on with the stiffness? It is not uncommon when people lose consciousness for changes in body tone to occur. Sometimes when people lose consciousness, they experience a transient paralysis, meaning they lose all muscle tone in their body and they become completely flaccid or limp. Or the opposite can occur and they can experience increased tone in their extremities, demonstrating either extension or flexion posturing. Now, the brief flexion and extension posturing that I just described are not to be confused with decord kit or decerebrate posturing, which are signs of severe brain trauma. Although mixed martial arts is a relatively new combat sport, there has been some interesting research into the injuries that occur as a result of MMA. And here are some interesting numbers for all of you stats junkies. Knockouts occur in 12.7% of all matches. And knockouts as a result of repetitive strikes occur in 19.1% of all matches. Therefore, the combined incidence of match ending head trauma is 31.9% of all matches. Risk factors for knockout include increased weight class, earlier time in the round, earlier round in the match, and increased age of the athlete being knocked out. So basically, the heavier your opponent is, or the older that you are, or the earlier in the match that it is, the more the likelihood that you are getting knocked out. Knockouts typically resulted from a direct blow to the head. Well, obviously. But usually this occurred to the mandible in 53.9% of the cases. Interestingly enough, the average time to stop a fight after a knockout blow was 3.5 seconds. 
And if you look at the slow-mo here, that's about how long it took referee Jason Herzog to stop it. Because really, the knockout occurred in about one and a half seconds, and then Jorge got in another two shots when Ben was on the ground. And study has confirmed that the losers, or in other words, the person getting knocked out, usually receives another 2.6 blows after they've been knocked out. So if you're the one getting knocked out, you can count on getting punched in the head another two and a half times before the referee is gonna stop the fight. So in the end, Ben was able to give a post-fight interview after this match. So I think that he's probably going to be okay. At least I hope he's gonna be okay. I don't know what's gonna come for him in the future with UFC or mixed martial arts fighting, but I suspect he'll go on to fight another day. So as you can see, closed head injuries, concussions, and knockouts are a common yet scary part of mixed martial arts. And remember, sometimes the consequences of closed head injuries can be far removed from the time of injury. With that being said, today I've been reacting to Jorge Masvidal's knockout of Ben Askren at UFC 239. If you're a returning member of the intern army, <laughs> hit the like button and share this video with a friend. And as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday... Ortho. Just a flesh wound.